Now, Kenya's horticulture exports have continued to grow despite tough challenges facing the sector. Um, it earned the country 153 billion shillings in 2018. Of course, cut flowers, fruits and vegetables took the lion's share of the earnings. A lot has been happening in the sector over the last couple of years, uh, with Chinese markets now opening up for Kenyan avocados. But now, the latest news is that Kenya risks losing 2.7 billion shillings annually from the Australian market due to regulations whose deadline was first on the 1st of July and has been extended now to the 1st of September 2019. So which way forward for the sector? Uh, joining me to have this conversation is Oki Segere Ojepat, the CEO of the Kenya uh, Fresh Produce uh, Consortium of Kenya, who will help us unpack this and other critical issues facing Kenya's horticultural space. My name is Terry Ann Chibet. OJ, thank you so much for joining us um, on Metropole TV and, of course, um, into this critical conversation for the horticulture space. Let's just start with what's currently happening um, and, of course, the biggest issue now, which is the possible loss of the Australian market. That's a 2.7 billion shilling market annually. How bad is it looking? It's now clear that from the first day of September, our flowers into Australia must go through, must be pest-free. And they have a reason. The reason why they have a... Australia is an island. And being an island, they're saying any place that is not there, once it lands in their country, it becomes disastrous. Mm -hmm. I would do the same if I was in their shoes. It is incumbent to us, in terms of the country and industry, to have put this in place quickly. And we now have two days. Yeah. So what, what, options are, what options are you looking at? There are three options. One option they're saying here is produce from a pest-free zone. They're also saying we will need a system approach. The system approach here is they're saying give us a protocol of what you have done to ensure that your system guarantees pest-free product arriving into Australia. The last option they're saying here is do a post-harvest treatment. Post-harvest treatment here, we have three ways. We either have to do dipping with a, to ensure that the pests die before we go, or we have to do uh, a fumigation using phosphine gas, or we have to do fumigation using uh, methyl bromide. So the option that is viable is fumigation, unfortunately, mm -hmm. We do not have a fumigation facility that is operational currently as a country that can be able to help us be able to sort out our flower, mm. our flowers before the 1st of September. So in our opinion, Scarfish should have taken the lead in ensuring that the other government agencies, the Space Pro Control Product Board, NEMA, where it's necessary, the Kenya Airports Authority, where it's necessary to get necessary licensing, Ideally, it's supposed to be government agencies taking the lead mm -hmm. with a business community basically doing business. So will you be seeking another extension w of the deadline? We have tried to seek the extension of the deadline, they would say no. In the last conversation we had with the Australian, a Kenyan High Commissioner in Australia, he said, listen, I have done my best. They have said no. They mm -hmm. have given it in written. They have written. They have given us option. It's clear that the only thing we can do is to comply. All right, let's look at another big story, and yeah. that's um, avocados, which, yeah. you know, has become the next big thing for, for Kenya. Yeah. Um, of course, that's after the trade de deal between um, Kenya and, and China to yeah. uh, export has avocados, and that's a huge global market. Yeah. But our exporters haven't been able to meet the requirements. Just tell us a little bit about what's happening in that space. I look at it from two levels. One, I look at it as an opportunity. A market has opened. The second thing is how do we take advantage of this market and how do we literally get into the marketplace? Mm. We're currently at a very tricky situation. My own take is that we negotiated a road deal. What we what needed to have, have? Yes. to have negotiated is because all of us, first of all, are, are, are members of WTO. And therefore, you did not need another arrangement between us and China. We should have negotiated what is called an equivalency. An equivalency is where they look at your system, they look at my system, and match the protocols. However, that is still an open option that we can go to. For now, what we have is almost unattainable. 
why it's unattainable for the majority of Kenyan entities is the requirement to get frozen avocado into China means that you have to freeze those avocados up to minus 18 degrees centigrade. Fresh produce still has more market than mm. frozen. Yes, and I'm curious about that because there's a conversation about uh, you know, fresh avocados or frozen avocados and the same Chinese market actually taking in fresh avocados as well. So why is it that the Kenyan uh, um, produce must be frozen? Are you going to get grade one of your fresh avocado frozen? frozen. That's why, why you're saying you it's unattainable. One? That's what I'm saying. It's unattainable for now for the majority of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. It is an, an opportunity for the investors who want to invest on machinery, which may take longer mm -hmm. based on who is this coming to invest on it. But in the meantime, what do we do? So and we have all gone do? out. What do we the farmers do at this point? What is happening at the moment is that we are the mercy of the fresh produce market in Europe and in Middle East. Uh, the beauty this year is that we've not had so much fruits because of the weather patterns, mm. the harsh climatic conditions. However, give credit where it's due. Kenyans have gone out and they've planted avocado. In the next three years, there is a possibility that we'll have so much avocado with us and what we need to be doing now is look at how do we diversify that market? Mm. How do we enter other markets? Value how do addition we, for one. Value addition for one. But what are we looking at here? Mm. What are we talking about value addition? Value addition could be extending the shelf life. Value addition could be looking at cosmetics mm -hmm. and look at what else is this avocado looking at in terms of oil. But fresh produce it still gives you a prime price. Mm. You want a fresh avocado on your table. So how what, often, so what advice how then are you often do you go farmers? for canned products? Not often. Yeah. How, but how often do you go for fresh products? All the time. It is what is preferred yeah. globally. Yeah. So what we're looking at here for farmers, one we're encouraging them is to plant the right variety. Two, we are encouraging them to ensure they have good quality seedlings and they can source these good quality seedlings from registered nurseries that are certified by CAFIS. Registered by AFA, HCD here, um, that is a Hot Culture Crops Directorate, and certified by CAFIS to authenticate the seedling, mm. right? Once we have that foundation, and then of course when it comes to planting, we want to have the right planting spacing and agronomy but when it comes to marketing at the moment we are still predominantly reliant on Europe as our market and we command a big share why because of the equator and because of the equator and mm. the, our patterns we have a sweet fruit even mm. in the marketplace we only need to get disciplined to ensure that we take good quality mature fruits in the marketplace and for farmers, what we're telling farmers is, listen, avocado is a good product. Let's get together in groups so that you do not have to, your two trees and you mm -hmm. want to transport them to Nairobi. Yeah. Let's consolidate them. Let's go through. Let's be patient. Let's mm -hmm. do it like any other business and sell the right food in the marketplace so that we also do not spoil our reputation. Mm -hmm. I wanted um, to jump into the issue of, of new markets, yeah. uh, which, which you have just raised. Currently... And I feel that perhaps the avocado market is one of the ones that's almost underreported in terms of, of impact yeah. on a global scale. Yeah. You know, for, 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 for Kenya to have 1.3% of the global market share of, yeah. of avocado exports, it's a big thing. And it's, yeah. and, you know, it's something that, that we can celebrate. But the export to China, or that China deal, would have then given us a bigger share of the global market. Yeah. How do we still get there? Um, as I said, we have... That was the first um, move. But as I said, we need to say thank you, at least mm. for the frozen. We got a window. We need to negotiate. They are business partners. They are, they're, the country, they are trading with us. You just go back to the report, as I, saw it, I told you, as we talk now, there's a report that they came, they saw, they gave recommendation. We go back to those recommendations and ensure that we correct. For example, one of the things they saw was scales scales all we need to do as a country is write to them and say 
we will do the following to ensure that you do not get scales on the avocado that we sent to you. Mm. They are, are there, with us. Were there any projections in terms of how Kenya, um, how much Kenya was, was bound to make through this China deal? Um, it was excitement. The first thing was more of excitement. Mm. Reality is, it's the business people that drive business. Government agenda is open business. Mm. The projections here, many people said, now we're going to do away with Europe. We are selling out in the country. We are going to sell more than 50% into Euro, into China. They are, we have a billion Chinese. If every Chinese bought just one fruit, all our fruits will go there. This is all a story. Yeah. Whether all Chinese eat avocado, I don't know. The truth is we, are go we were going to a virgin land. As we come to the, um, to the end of our conversation, just yeah. very uh, quick questions yeah. about the direct flight to the U.S. and if it, yeah. had, if it has had any impact um, towards conversations on opening the U.S. market for Good cut flowers. I know first, I think, uh, w w first we must all appreciate that that's an opportunity, that if we take advantage of it, will put us at a totally different level in terms of trade between us and, 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 and the U.S. Um, originally, KQ strategy is not on cargo, it's on passenger. Mm. That makes us nervous. Why it's making us nervous is because then you are the mercy of the passengers. If you have more passengers, your space is closed. If you have less passengers, you have bigger space. So planning from our side becomes difficult. But this is what we've said in the industry. We would like to see that market open up and we have our fresh cut flowers into market first because they're lighter, it's easier to get in there, and we're already selling flowers into uh, US through Amsterdam. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Very final question, your outlook for the performance of the sector in in 2019, I mean, last year was... was last year, we, we, we thank God, we hit one... One, 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 one 153 point, B. 153 was mm. 1.52.2 yeah. something, 153. We look at a good year. However, we have faced a lot of challenges. The challenges we faced is weather patterns have been very bad. Number one, our cost of production has consistently remained higher. Look at what we're now struggling with uh, Australia. Actually, what we thought is we were going to hit at least one, 170, 180 mm. uh, billion. We are still not off that because our hubs market is growing. Thank you yeah. so much um, for giving us your insights into yeah. Kenya's horticultural um, export space and we, we wish you all the very best. I've been in conversations yeah. with Okisegere Ojepat, the CEO of Fresh Produce Consortium of Kenya, to give us um, some insights into what's happening in as far as cut flowers to Australia is concerned and also the big China issue where avocados is concerned. My name is Terry Anchovet. Cheers.